tag or no tag? Mike Tannenbaum, Saquon Barkley of the Giants, should they tag him or not? Graz, no tag. Even though he's 27 years old and presumptively in the prime of his career, he's given this organization six really good years, 35 rushing touchdowns, but it's time. There's too much angst and consternation going on in that organization. They don't need more. There's going to be a ton of running backs out there. Let them go to free agency, and you never know. Maybe they can work out a deal later on. We'll dive further into that later in the show. Meanwhile, Harry Douglas, T. Higgins of the Bengals. Tag or no tag? Yeah, I'm going to go tag. You got Joe Burrow coming back, Jamar Chase. You need to see if you can keep this band together to try to make a Super Bowl run for one more year if you're not able to keep T. Higgins in 2025. He missed five games this season. Kind of a down year for him, but I look forward to him, him having a, actually a big year in 2024, so I say tag him. Bengals, of course, trying to catch the Super Bowl champion Chiefs, and that brings us to our next one. Jeff, Chris Jones, tag or no tag? No tag, Roz, and, and this is a complicated one. I, I know we're going to go a little more in the weeds here, but he's going to get a 20% raise on his previous cap. That puts him at $32 million a year for this coming season. I ultimately think that they just need to work out the deal before free agency hits, keep Jones from going on the market, keep him with the Chiefs, but do it on a long-term deal. The tag at this point, we know what happened last year. We know that Chris Jones is willing to hold out and we know that the team doesn't necessarily want to pay him $32 million for this coming season. Don't tag him. Get the long-term deal done now. Yeah, they tried to do a long-term deal last year. And remember, he did hold out like into the season. He missed the first game. Uh, so we know he's willing to stand on principle there. We also know that his impact on the Chiefs' defense is absolutely massive when you dig into the numbers. When Jones is on the field, Kansas City's pass rush win rate is 17% higher than it is when he is not on the field. When he's on the field, Kansas City averages a sack for every 16 plays compared to a sack every 50 plays when he's not on the field. That is a significant impact player, and obviously we saw yeah. it come to life in the Super Bowl. Uh, we saw it in last year's Super Bowl. Uh, can, Harry, can the Chiefs pull off this three-peat if they don't bring Chris Jones back? Well, Let's say this. They have Patrick Mahomes, which is the standard at the quarterback position, and anything is possible. But I believe their chance is greater having Chris Jones on their roster. We're talking about a guy that not only plays defensive tackle, but you talk about versatility amongst that defensive line, and it allows defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo to be able to do a lot of different things within his defense. We look at the AFC Championship game versus the Cincinnati Bengals and how Chris Jones made an impact. In the Super Bowl, he literally stopped three touchdowns from happening because he's that dominant. Uh, a, a dominant guy on the defensive line like Chris Jones allows your linebackers to be able to run through and make plays consistent, consistently, but also George Kalafis. He was able to have 10 and a half sacks this year tied with Chris Jones because of the double teams that Chris Jones demands. Mike T, you're, put your GM hat on here for a second. Like, you heard Jeff talk about all the issues that have surrounded this situation the last couple of years. What would your plan be with Chris Jones? I would be over-communicative and say, hey, look, Chris, we will franchise you. We will swallow $32 million in 2024. Not ideal. I'd be having a very similar conversation with LeJarrius Steve. They're great young corner. I want both of them back. We're trying to win the Super Bowl for the third time in a row, and we're going to work really hard to get a deal done. And you guys already laid out how valuable he is, especially against double teams. So there is a tremendous sense of urgency. Brett Beach and Andy Reid can enjoy the Super Bowl for about 10 minutes, and we're going to get Chris Jones signed. But he's going to know if we don't get this deal done, Graz, you will be franchised, and we will find enough levers under the cap to make sure that we can sign him. And look, to me, it's Chris Jones and LeJerry Steed, and you look at this graphic, we could draft a tackle, let those other guys graduate, but Chris Jones and LeJerry Steve have to be Chiefs to have a shot at that three-peat. But as you mentioned, Jeff, that is not going to be cheap or easy if they want to keep both right. of those guys. Do you think – how essential do you think it, Chris Jones is for the Chiefs three-peating? So I, I think this is where the Chiefs hold the leverage. They have shown now that they are a dynasty, and dynasties morph into whatever they need to to win a Super Bowl. Last year, we would have gone into the season saying they need more wide receivers. Midway through this season, we would have said this team needs more wide receivers. And ultimately, they still won the Super Bowl without them. 
We can't say that this team needs anything. They could morph back into this coming season an offensive powered football team and win the Super Bowl if they commit to the wide receiver room. So I don't believe that Chris Jones or anybody other than Patrick Mahomes is essential to this team going back to the Super Bowl once again. They just have to decide what their identity is going to be and commit to that. If they can't get the deal done with Chris Jones, go spend the money on more wide receivers. But ultimately, I think that this team has done a good job of showing they can redefine themselves, something they've done in the past two years, and, and still win the Super Bowl. So maybe Chris Jones, as irreplaceable as he seems to be, maybe you're right, they can uh, find a way. We'll obviously be keeping tabs on that story as the offseason progresses. And, and look, I mean, the Chiefs are set up. We know this. We haven't even hit free agency yet. But as of this moment, ESPN has ESPN bet, excuse me, has the Chiefs as the favorites to win the AFC just ahead of Baltimore and Buffalo. Bengals are the only team on this screen who did not win 10 games last season. They won nine after... Joe Burrow got hurt. They currently have the fourth shortest odds. So this leads me to my next question, Jeff Darlington. Which of those teams, or, or a different one if you like, is the biggest challenger to the Chiefs in the AFC next year? Look, I, I still think it's the Ravens. The, what the Ravens did this year, I understand that they ultimately fell to the Chiefs, a team that has proven to be so clutch in big moments. But the Ravens showed that they are a championship caliber team and they, to me, don't feel like, number one, that they were a one-hit wonder, and number two, that they're going to be dismantled. It feels like this is a team that is building toward the moment, and I think that that's an important reason why they continue to be the team that will be the biggest issue to the Chiefs moving forward. Who do you like, Mike T? I'll go with the Cincinnati Bengals with a double asterisk. Asterisk number one is Joe Burrow is ready to go. Asterisk number two, T. Higgins is there, either tagged or a long-term deal. When you have him and Jamar Chase, it's almost impossible to have one, let alone two corners that can match up with those great wide receivers. They could outscore teams. We've seen uh, Cincinnati go into Kansas City and do just that. So if number nine there is healthy and T. Higgins is back with Jamar Chase, they're going to be the team that's hard to beat next year. Harry? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals because I've actually seen them do it in a playoff setting yeah. in the AFC Championship game. Not only that, Joe Burrow has had a lot of success versus Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. So I think Cincinnati, if, if Joe Burrow can stay healthy, they pose the biggest threat, especially in the AFC, to the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. I think that's the key, right? Burrow hurt his thumb on his throwing hand, missed the latter part of the season, and if he comes back healthy, obviously that's a, that's a, that's a big if, but the Bengals are counting on it. They're, they did go 9-8 and eight and finish in fourth place. So they're a good team that gets to play a fourth-place schedule, which I think could set them up pretty well to get a pretty good seed. Jeff, I, I mean, the Ravens, I love everything they're doing, but three significant losses on the defensive side on the coaching staff, oh, uh, and they got oh some free agent issues. No, we I don't, we don't think... I thought you were going to go with me. We don't, think, uh, we don't think Mike McDonald was important to what the Ravens did last year. Now he's the head coach of the Seahawks. No, and, no, no, I didn't mean... Yeah. I just was I was just disappointed to see you disagree with Oh, you didn't like me. my... Yeah, I got it, got it, yeah. I Sorry just, to let you down. No, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> okay. all I, your I, respect. I apologize. Well, I'll get you later on in the show. We'll see if there's, if there's something else we, we can... <laughs> agree on but let's keep the conversation going with the AFC contenders how about a contender wish list we're going to give you the team and you tell me the one move they can make that will vault them past the Chiefs in the AFC Mike Tannenbaum start with you what's the one move that could put the Buffalo Bills ahead of the Chiefs they need to add another receiver opposite Stefan Diggs as Hembo reminded me last year they were third in explosive plays that fell all the way down to 26 Look, T. Higgins is probably going to be franchised, but if you get somebody like him or Mike Evans, Tyler Boyd, another quality receiver to go opposite what Stephon Diggs what used to be a, a tremendous receiver, he's probably a, a notch down, that would go a long way in making Josh Allen and the Bills a team that can get over the hump and get to the Super Bowl. Jeff, how about your Baltimore Ravens? What is the uh, number one move they need to make to get past the Chiefs? Keep adding weapons. Keep going with this plan. Keep building around Lamar Jackson. Wide receiver. Go get another one opposite Zay Flowers. You saw the impact that a rookie wide receiver can have. Keep going. And by the way, throw in a running back as well. Go get Derrick Henry. But just keep adding weapons. Harry Douglas, the other team the Chiefs beat in the playoffs besides Buffalo and Baltimore was Miami. What's the one move that can put the Dolphins past the Chiefs? Uh, 
there there isn't a move. Unless Patrick Mahomes <laughs> retires, Mike T, your team's not going. Excuse me, Jeff, the team that you mentioned isn't going. Patrick Mahomes is still living. He's still breathing. He's won three Super Bowls in the last five years with two MVPs. So if Patrick Mahomes isn't retiring, I don't have any of these teams uh, over, over the Kansas City Chiefs. It's just simple I, I, as that. Yo, Harry, I have just the solution, which is he's the Michael Jordan of this era, Michael Jordan played baseball right in the middle of prime. Yeah. His dad was a baseball player. The Royals are in Kansas City. Maybe we could get that done. So that's it. That's how the AFC catches up with the Chiefs, is Mahomes takes two years off to play baseball like Michael Jordan did once upon a time. Good luck with that. I don't think that one is in the cards uh, for the AFC contenders.